Hello and welcome to this introduction section of Entrepreneurship Essentials. Today we are going to deliberate on the definitional aspect of the entrepreneurship and then the issues about motivation to start or create new venture. We will be discussing about types of, types of business venture purely from the perspective of entrepreneurship. We will be talking about economic contributions of entrepreneurship as, a, as an indication of uh, motivation to start a business. Moving forward, we will be discussing about corporate entrepreneurship and innovation and entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurs are highly envied persons. They make significant contribution to the society while creating wealth for themselves. That is the reason perhaps why increasing number of persons are taking the plans into entrepreneurship knowing fully well that a small percentage of them become successful and even a smaller fraction grow into large enterprises. The most important event in the life of a startup is a time when a customer is making payment in exchange for the product or service provided by the startup. And that too, both parties feel win win, meaning the customer thinks a better value for their money and the entrepreneur makes profit. If the customers think they get a better value for money, they are going to come back repeatedly. And on the way, they are going to spread a favorable word of mouth. An increasing number of customers will come and the business will have a sustainable, profitable growth. Something that every entrepreneur aspires, but it's easier said than done. We all would like to be achiever. But achieving something definitely is difficult and otherwise it won't be an achievement. You walk hundreds of miles on the highway, perhaps nobody will notice. You climb one kilometer of the most difficult mountain that nobody could climb, perhaps you will be in the news. Similarly, entrepreneurship offers above average return possibilities. So obviously entrepreneurship is very risky. That is why the success rate is so, so poor. Let us see what it takes to become an entrepreneur. How is it defined and what are the other elements that defines successful entrepreneur. We will be discussing all of them moving forward. Entrepreneurs have a compelling vision or a dream and they have an extraordinary comprehensive plan to achieve that vision, to execute the plan. They can identify opportunities in adversities or translate adverse situation into opportunities. Failures do not deter them. They can identify possible method to work around the adversities or risks and accomplish desired goals. They innovate new products or new process or methods to solve pains in a more competitive manner and create above average profit and then they sustain. They can innovate new business models with superior value proposition and make people happier. Value proposition 
refers to the the value that customers will perceive in the product or services that the business offers meaning if they if they perceive that your product is better value for them in terms of money cost in terms of efficacy of your product in terms of delivery in in terms of performance reliability it's better value proposition so they become happier entrepreneurs can organize a balanced team with complementary skills and manage them for best possible execution of business models now here is some explanation about the term entrepreneur the word entrepreneur has originated from a french word called entreprendre which means to undertake that definition perhaps subsumes almost everything that we do because we undertake many many things in life even if we do not become an entrepreneur the dictionary word is slightly more particular one who organizes manages and assumes the risk of a business or enterprise is entrepreneur entrepreneurship entrepreneur start or adopt entrepreneurship entrepreneurship is about identifying an unmet pain the pain point in a group of people or maybe in a group of businesses that is our target customer or that is our customer segment customer segment means a group of people or group of companies with similar characteristics similar liking similar aspiration in the context of a product that is under consideration so that suppose you are trying to market a product so you have to identify if you can identify people who are who would be potentially interested in your product a group of them actually or the possible group of them is the customer segment so that you can communicate with them easily you can you understand their pain more deeply and you can structure your offering to meet to best meet their requirement or aspiration innovators entrepreneurship is innovating a suitable solution to alleviate the pain in a competitive way meaning in a cost effective way so that it can be sustained you can make profit it's about organizing a balanced team arranging required fund putting in place the required infrastructure for manufacturing or giving the service whatever is the business it's about making product or service available to the customer which is the channel through which you make customer aware that you exist or the product exist and then you send the product to the customer through the channel or the channel also includes where they can buy whether it's a retail store or online shopping e-commerce portal like that then maintaining loyal and satisfying employees employees are very critical because they have to make it many of the entrepreneur enterprise did, do not survive because they could not maintain loyal employees then building loyal customer base i think customer base should come first because customer is the center of success of any business entrepreneurship is also about sustaining operation in competitive manner scaling up the business competitive manner and then scaling up the business it's about constantly endeavoring to offer increasing increasingly better value for the money to the customers so that they come back repeatedly to buy your products and spread a favorable word of mouth so your turnover increases you achieve higher growth moving forward entrepreneurship is about assuming all the risk related to an enterprise there are bookish definitions i'll not dwell much into that you can read them 
Now, why people would become entrepreneurs is very obvious, but let us try to put it them in, in a tabular manner so that we don't miss anything. Of course, it's very difficult. It's, it's a subject that, that can, it's not a theory that uh, you can uh, authoritatively say that these are the only items. So, it's all fluid, open-ended. What motivates people to become an entrepreneur? One of the most important motivation is that you observe an agonizing or grievous pain in the society, in a group of people. And these people are crying for a solution. And you would like to alleviate this pain, whatever that is. So you think that you can actually find a solution. So you start developing the solution, then build a team. And once the solution is there in the horizon, then you start a venture. So, it's purely driven by opportunity. Alternately, you may come up with a brilliant idea all of a sudden, something like an epiphany moment, or it's kind of serendipity, meaning suddenly there is some positive or, or fortunate stroke of luck or flush and you get an idea, Eureka type. And then you think that this idea actually can do wonders to the society to improve their life or to alleviate some pain. In any way, you can make many people happy. So you think that, okay, I should pursue it, this idea, execute it and then develop product or solution and then make it available to the people. There are many who take up entrepreneurship because they, they, are, they are passionate about doing something, something new and groundbreaking. So they start exploring and then many of them are successful in finding something, many may not be. So whosoever can find an idea through which they can actually do something groundbreaking, they start a new venture. Many of us aspire to become independent, to be our own boss, a kind of sense of control that we control our, ourselves or maybe the far extreme we control our destiny. There are others who would like to achieve whatever they want to achieve in life, maybe personal growth, maybe money, maybe anything. These are part of internal factor, meaning a factor internal to the entrepreneur, endogenous to the entrepreneur. Moving forward, people would like to be recognized for their contribution. Suppose you are working in a big company, you think that you are a small fish in a big company. Rather than being that, you can start a company, become a small fish in a big, uh, big fish in a small company. So, maybe your contribution will be visible and people will recognize. Then there may be motivation from the fact that one can leverage their education or their experience that is unique and that can give them uh, opportunity means they can use their education and experience to uh, to manufacture or offer a product or service in a more competitive manner than the competitors. So that may motivate people to start a business. Some can do this just for the passion of doing something significant and then make a change in the world for the better. Entrepreneurship in, in that sense can be perceived as a vehicle for creating huge wealth for the nation, for self and family members, maybe extended family members. Entrepreneurship in that sense actually offers great opportunity for anybody to reach to any level. There are umpteen stories about rags to riches like uh, Durubhai Ambani. He started 
his life in a very humble environment, but he became one of the top entrepreneurs. So if someone who thinks he is kind of at the bottom of the pyramid, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship offers a route to reach to the top. Of course, yes, one has to follow. One has to understand what he, what one needs to do and what kind of risks lie ahead. So if someone can alleviate all of them and it's an opportunity in a nutshell. It's not a sure shot, definitely sure shot way of making money, but it's an, it offers an opportunity. So it gives equal opportunity to everybody to, to rise. There are others who are highly creative and they think that their existing employer does not require their kind of talent or they are incapable of exploiting their talent in their product or service, whatever they do. So they think that they should start a company and, and uh, use, exploit their talent and uh, do something. There may be exogenous factors like uh, external environment like government, favorable government policies, which means uh, infrastructure will be available, uh, money will be some kind of financial assistance will be available, then uh, there may be a favorable ecosystem starting from incubation to finally getting money for uh, seed money, then, uh, when, then angel money, etc., etc. So if everything is in place, like starting a company, exiting from a company, all those issues may att actually attract people to start new venture. There are other factors like availability of a raw material. Suppose you have license for iron ore mines, so definitely you can start iron making plant, something like that. Then the society may demand, the situation may demand, like every time the society, things are changing. So changed environment may actually demand something and, and one may think that I should contribute. I should take the lead, so become entrepreneur. In short, entrepreneurship is a vehicle to make many people happy while achieving desired personal goals by the entrepreneurs themselves. But then, this may not uh, stimulate everybody into action and then uh, it may not attract everybody to start a venture. We are all different. Our perception about risk is different. So there may be some who are highly motivated to start a business. There are some who will never start a business because they are so afraid of the risk. Even if somebody gives guarantee that he takes all the risk, all the responsibility to alleviate the risk. So this graph actually shows that there are people who would run behind rumors. Some, somebody says or maybe while uh, uh, making a journey in a train, in a bus or somewhere or having a cup of tea, someone says you do this business and you are going to make money. There will be some who will run after that, up to that idea. But moving forward, gradually people are more realistic and then gradually people are more kind of protective or uh, less aggressive to start a business. But then there are umpteen number of motivational factors. Types of business is, is purely academic. Uh, this this uh, types are, this classification is based on uh, entrepreneur um, based on the perspective of entrepreneurship, not really kinds of business for uh, for registering companies or for taxation or for any other purpose. So there are uh, this uh, a list of uh, uh, companies like innovation driven entrepreneur, like corporate entrepreneur, social entrepreneur or social entrepreneurship. There may be some for profit, not for profit then there are small businesses. Other than that, there are large corporate entities and cooperatives. So, it is a small classification. Now, 
the books and other literatures are agog about the distinction between a small business and entrepreneurial business. The distinction actually is not so important, but then uh, one needs to understand that uh, there are businesses at the far back end, meaning uh, where there is no innovation necessary, no risk associated and very limited growth prospect, whereas on the other spectrum, other side of the spectrum, there are businesses which are highly innovation driven and uh, there are risk, but then there are high growth potential. So, one can achieve huge growth, provided you can alleviate the risk on the way. So, making a distinction perhaps makes sense in that sense, but I would tend to believe that even a small business can incorporate almost all the attributes of an entrepreneurial venture into it and then translate their small business into an entrepreneurial ven venture, any, any small business for that matter. So, after reading that uh, comparative, uh, com comparative, after the comparative study, one should uh, or will understand that entrepreneurial venture are uh, created around a vision and is driven by innovation and unique value proposition. It is associated with achieving growth and extricating risks. It always aim aims fast scalability and high growth. But then can a small business be entrepreneurial? As I said earlier that any small business can become a, uh, an entrepreneurial venture by incorporating the characteristic features of entrepreneurial venture. For example, you just uh, look at any grocery store in a big marketplace we find that in, in front of some grocery stores there will be a huge crowd, in front of others there may not be anybody. And you go close, go, you go close, close to the shop and uh, observe, you will see that the shop where uh, there are huge crowd, the owners and the employees are more friendly and uh, they are kind of, they appear as if they have the best interest of the customers in mind. Uh, they would say they would say if some some uh, particular item has uh, expired their validity they will say don't take this this is already expired so in the process they are trying to send a message across that we are customer friendly whereas in the other shop people are not friendly just that little small thing actually make so much distinction that in one shop there will be several hundred customers in a day, whereas in the other there will be some tens of them. That makes a huge difference. Now, other than this friendly approach, one can add further value or differentiation by delivering at, at the door. They can take orders through phone and deliver. It may eventually replicate the good model into another marketplace. So, they start scaling up. The process may go on and on, meaning uh, they can keep on adding more customer value. So, in whatever way possible, there are many ways possible. All such actions are part of a strategy and can be perceived as innovations. These are innovations of the business model, if not technology, at least business models are being innovated in the process. Therefore, it may not be wrong to state that all businesses may innovate to be more competitive, more customer friendly and then grow faster, faster than competitors and make superior value, superior profit and sustain for a long time. So, in the process they become entrepreneurial. On the other side, this business when they scale up, they start opening shops, they also run the risk just like any other entrepreneurial venture. Therefore small business can definitely be an entrepreneurial venture. So, coming back to the definition, the distinction part between a small business and entrepreneurial venture, 
actually the distinction kind of uh, gets eliminated gradually as small businesses try to emulate the properties or the characteristic features or the attributes of entrepreneurial venture. Now, another significant uh, thing that uh, motivate people to become an entrepreneur is the contribution, significant contributions that are made by entrepreneurs to the society and society at large, to the country and the society. So, that actually motivate many entrepreneurs, many people to become an entrepreneur. Here is some data about economic contributions of entrepreneur uh, to the economic development or, or happiness of the people. Data suggest, data, current data, 2018 data by Gedi.com suggest that entrepreneurial activities and per capita GDP are highly correlated. So, there is no doubt data speaks volumes of the contribution, economic contributions of the entrepreneur. Similarly, the global entrepreneurship index is highly correlated with the quality of life index. So, entrepreneurs obviously are the reason for economic development. Their contributions are very significant. Now, elaborating slightly moving forward, when we talk of contribution, one thing is they generate employment. And if we look at the company as an individual entity, perhaps the impression might be that it's not, not much. But then if you look at the larger picture, it will be highly visible that they actually contribute greater than what meets the eye. I'll elaborate that with that next slide example. Suppose one starts a very small rice mill in a remote rural village where there is no industry or any, any opportunity except agriculture. So, this unit will require transporter, it will require some daily labor, some uh, slightly educated people for accounting or managing office, they need supplies and uh, gradually these people will become consumer. So, they would like to buy more. So, maybe some someone will start a grocery shop, maybe a health center will come up and maybe some people will think uh, of uh, buying a rickshaw and plying between the village and the nearest city. So, gradually, gradually value is being created. So, a school may come up and then these employees may think of sending their kids to the school because they get a uh, regular monthly salary. So, the entire economic ecosystem of the village improves just by setting up one rice mill, one small rice mill. Now, you can extrapolate if someone sets up, other people sets up more unit, what are the benefits that are going to accrue and what change entrepreneurs can bring. This slide of course is a repetition of whatever I said so far, so I will skip for the time being. Time is very short. Now, entrepreneurs bring new technology from abroad and then they change the technological landscape of the, of the country. So, eventually technology gets diffused and the whole technological landscape improves. They bring foreign exchange because they export, bring foreign exchange, the rupee, the local currency appreciates and that improves the purchasing power of the population. It eventually improves the quality of life of the citizens. Take the example of Reliance Industry, a single company that is giving 5 percent of the direct taxes. Reliance Geo, a recent study in 2018 by Harvard Business School, a center of Harvard Business School says that Reliance Geo alone is going to increase the GDP by 5.65 percent. So, imagine if there are more number of companies, what impact they can do to our economy. Moving forward, we have corporate entrepreneurship or intrapreneurship. This is very important in today's world. It's a new phenomenon, but we need to discuss this quite thoroughly. So, there are large number of slides actually. Employees, I will define from the slide itself, employees within the organization are encouraged to behave as entrepreneur. 
to be creative in a proactive manner. They can embrace calculated risk to achieve higher goals in pursuing disruptive innovation within the large mission of the organization using resources, capabilities and security of the company to draw upon. This is a phenomenon that is known as corporate entrepreneurship. It is an entrepreneurship within an enterprise. So some people who feel they are creative, who feel they can think proactively, meaning they can see the future and then develop product to make, meet the future needs and they embrace calculated, they don't, they are not afraid of doing something new. They take resources from the company or the company encourages them to use the resources of the company and develop new products so that company is ahead of competition. This is called corporate entrepreneurship. There are many definition, I'll skip them for the timing. Uh, this time is short, so you can read them pausing the slide. Importantly, why corporate entrepreneurship? Generally speaking, people are uh, creative only when the atmosphere or the environment is open, only when they are not under duress to do something. So, uh, in a corporate atmosphere, in a research and development uh, context, people are not innovative. They will become innovative when we offer them an open kind of atmosphere, a separate a space for them and allow them to think, think independently without any duress, perhaps people will be more innovative. So that is reason number one as to why corporate entrepreneurship, both from the company's point of view and from the point of view of the employees. Creative persons are less restless, they feel suffocated if they cannot put their creative action, creativity into action, meaning if someone is creative, he or she would like to execute that, means he comes up with a lot of ideas, they, they bubble with ideas and then they want to put that ideas into action. If they don't, if they are not capable of doing that, they feel depressed or they can do some, something untoward. So corporate entrepreneurship actually offer them this opportunity, they offer them separate space, they offer them all the resources. Uh, at their disposal and then uh, they start uh, uh, exploiting their creative talent. Another problem that is solved through corporate entrepreneurship is that you recruit talented people but then you are not capable of giving them enough food for thought. So there will be high attrition rate because they will not remain with you, it is a double trouble. Whereas you give them everything, they become creative. You, your company remains innovative and uh, your business become profitable on a sustainable basis. So it is a win-win for everybody. What to expect as an employee from corporate entrepreneurship? It is almost everything. I have already discussed, we will skip, we will not discuss, elaborate on them. So it is full empowerment to act like an entrepreneur without major part of the risk because the risk is taken by the company. If, if, uh, if the employee fails to deliver uh, but uh, they, can, they can show reason as to why they fail means there is no, no laxity on their part, they will not be punished, neither they lose money. So there is every, every reason for them, they, they reap the benefit because if they come up with something new, the company is going to handsomely reward them or they can even start their own company if they find that uh, it is not aligned with the company's uh, main mission. So everything is possible, we will escape that slide for the timing. What to expect as a company, this also has been elaborated, I will not elaborate them again. Most importantly, their product development process gets accelerated, so the new products can be introduced very quickly. Even before your competitors are going to preempt you, you can preempt the competition. So you remain competitive in the marketplace and you achieve sustainable growth. I will skip this slide also. 
what it takes to pursue entrepreneurship, corporate entrepreneurship. Suppose you are an employee, what you need to possess to become suitable for corporate entrepreneurship. You need to be creative, you need to be self-motivated, no one is going to motivate you to become creative and you need to be action oriented, you need to take action to achieve and self-driven, whatever is necessary you have to do that. You need to be proactive, you cannot wait and see what is happening in the world and then you know react to that, you have to be proactive, be futuristic, think independently and be flexible about your approach, about, uh, about future, about uh, the method that you adopt, then you, you have to be willing to accept failure. That should be an option. If you fail and become depressed, then, then nobody can help. So you have to fail, you have to accept failure and fight back relentlessly so that eventually you become successful. There are many examples of corporate entrepreneurship. You should read them from here. I will not repeat them. Mahindra Mahindra has initiated something in India also. There are some examples about uh, big companies adopting corporate entrepreneurship. So, uh, you can read them uh, from different other sources other than this slide. Now, briefly we will be discussing about innovation and entrepreneurship, maybe moving forward I will have a separate slide on innovation or how to innovate and how innovation drives success of entrepreneurship. Today we are just going to talk about innovation and entrepreneurship. Joseph Sumpeter was the first to connect innovation with entrepreneurship and he famously said that entrepreneurship with innovation can is relevant developing new product, new production methods, new market, new forms of organization. Use resources in a, in a innovative manner to translate them into valuable products just to maximize value to consumer generating superior returns and resulting in creation of wealth for the nation, nation as well. Entrepreneurs use innovation for all of these. Schumpeter actually coined the term creative destruction. It's kind of a oxymoron, but uh, that is what it is. And today we actually actually understand the meaning and people adopt that. You have to disrupt the the existing market, existing technology, existing test of people perhaps to an ex extreme extent and to make successful ventures. So that is how uh, you, you disrupt through innovation. So that is what is creative destruction. So uh, entrepreneurs, as per Schumpeter, entrepreneurs greatly value self-reliance. They strive for distinction through excellence. They are highly optimistic. They always favor challenges and take calculated risk. This is how it has been defined there in business dictionary. One single data actually explains how innovation disrupting the marketplace. From 1955 to 2014, then in the 60 years, 88 percent of the Fortune 500 companies became non-existent, meaning they don't, they no longer feature in the list of Fortune 500 companies, which used to be featuring earlier. Either they have become bankrupt, or uh, they have become insignificant, or maybe merged with some other company. So, Fortune 500, 88 percent of the Fortune 500 companies which were uh, so large, too large to die, but uh, they are non-existent because new innovation from new entrepreneurial venture disrupted the marketplace and then they could not sustain, they could not uh, cope up with the new uh, paradigm. 
this is just an example and a wonderful explanation about innovation, disruption and sustainability of company. Any employee joining Facebook will be given a little red book called Facebook's little red book that famously says, if you do not create the thing that can kill Facebook, someone else will, meaning unless Facebook company or employees of the Facebook create something that can potentially moving forward can kill Facebook, someone else will create the same thing ahead of Facebook, Facebook employees and then they will kill Facebook. So that perhaps in a nutshell conveys the meaning of or the importance of innovation in disrupting marketplace, disrupting companies and creating sustainabilities. These are some of the references. In conclusion, entrepreneurship creates value for the society at large. All businesses can innovate, can take calculated risk to remain ahead of competition and can be called entrepreneurial. Whatever one does and wherever one works, there is a scope to use entrepreneurial quality. Thank you.